their spirit. In the waters of baptism, Raymond died with Christ and rose with him in new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. I welcome you all here today to St. Mary's Church uh, this afternoon for uh, Raymond Fitzpatrick's funeral mass. Those present in the church, uh, family members, and a few close friends, and those of you joining us by live stream or radio link. I extend my own sincere sympathy and that of the parish community here to Raymond's sisters Veronica and Anne, to his brothers Terry, PJ and Tony, to his uncle Peter in Nace, to his brothers-in-law Tommy and Brian, to his sisters-in-law, Bernie and Mona, to his nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. In our Mass today, we pray for peace and for eternal rest for Raymond's soul. We thank God for his almost 60 years in this life. 
And we ask God to comfort his family members in their sad loss at this time. I will now place a Christian symbol, the lectionary containing the word of God on Raymond's coffin. In life, Raymond cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life, come, blessed of my Father. I welcome also um, Bishop Emeritus uh, Leo O'Reilly and Father Kevin Fay, who are in the sanctuary here. So uh, some items now symbolic of Raymond's life will be uh, put on the table. One has already arrived and the commentary will be supplied by his two nieces, Felicity and Nicola. Before us are four items that symbolize different aspects of Raymond's life. This is the plaque he received upon his retirement from air last summer. He was so proud of it and kept it at the center of his mantelpiece ever since. Raymond started out in P&T when he was about 20 and remained with them for 40 years through all the changes. Speaking to his friends and colleagues from air over the last few days, it's clear he was admired by everyone who met and worked with him. He was so fond of those of you who, with whom he worked and was very glad of the wonderful friendships he made over the years. I know he will be missed dearly by everyone in air. This is the picture of Granny Fitzpatrick. Raymond's love for his mother was clear to all and he lived with her for most of his life until her death in 2000. He did anything he could for her, bringing her to Mass every weekend and driving her around the country to see her grandchildren each week. He had a special place in his heart for her, and we are assured that he is now with her once again. Next up, we have his Alexa speaker to represent his love of country music. We got this for him last year so he could listen to the radio at home. Many of you will know Raymond from the Saturday nights at the country club in the Kilmore, and I've heard he was somewhat of a dancer when he wanted to be. He enjoyed those nights, the music, the dancing, the people and the crack so much, and his absence will definitely be felt when those nights return. When we first got him the Alexa speaker, I set up my Spotify music account on it, um, thinking it would be a good way for him to listen to music. Little did I know, because at the end of the year, Spotify emailed me to tell me that I was in the top 0.5% of Michael English's fans. So thank you, Raymond, for that title. Lastly, we have a pot of Raymond's famous honey. Beekeeping was a huge passion of his for the last 10 years. He took to it like a duck to water, his patience and attention to detail, making him a natural with the bees. He used to say that he had the most employees in Ballyhays because he had 250,000 workers working for him. He was so fond of everyone in Cavan Beekeepers Association and found a lovely sense of community with you all. For the last few summers, he could be found in his kitchen, newspaper lining the floor and pots of honey on every surface. He was completely in his element. For hours and hours, we'd inspect jars of honey, looking for small specks or air bubbles that would have to be removed. He was a complete perfectionist, but it paid off. 
Every week or two, he'd go off to a different show around Ireland, and he would never come home without a medal or a trophy. One of his proudest wins was at the Honey Show in London. I used to joke with him afterwards that the Honey was then internationally award-winning. He loved teaching us all about the bees, their fascinating work, and their importance to the environment. When he got sick and could no longer care for them, his friends from the society minded his house, and he was so grateful for that. Last Christmas, we got him a bird feeder. It was less work than the bees, but he still had a connection to the outdoors. He would take pictures of the different types of birds that came along and send them to us. It wasn't long until he had a very big population of birds in the back garden. Now that he is no longer with us, these are memories that we will cherish forever. And we know that whenever we see a honey bee fly by or hear a bird sing, Raymond is close by. Thank you, ladies. Uh, we now stand for the Gloria and the opening prayer. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we firmly believe that your Son, Jesus, died and rose to life. We pray for our brother Raymond, who has died in Christ. Raise him at the last day to share the glory of the risen Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So please be seated now for the word of God. And the readings we're using today are the readings of today's feast day, which is Trinity Sunday. Generally, Moses said to the people, put this question to the ages that are past, that went before you, from the time God created man and one end of the heaven to the other, was anything ever heard? Did ever a people hear the voice of the living God speaking from the heart of the fire as you heard it, and remain alive? Has any God ventured to take to himself one nation from the midst of another by ordeals? signs, wonders, war with mighty hand and outstretched arm. By fearsome terrors, all this that the Lord your God did for you before your eyes in Egypt. Understand this today, therefore, and take it to the heart. The Lord is God indeed, in heaven above as on earth beneath. He had no other. Keep his laws and commandments as I give them to you today, so that you and your children may prosper and live long in the land that the Lord your God gives you forever. The word of the Lord. my rock, my 
Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is the Son of God. The Spirit you received is not the Spirit of slaves bringing fear into their lives again. It is the Spirit of sons, and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us now stand to acclaim the gospel. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. And know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have gathered in St. Mary's Church and via webcam and radio for Raymond's funeral mass. It is a sad occasion for Raymond's brothers, sisters, and other family members, and all of us who had the great pleasure of knowing Raymond. We were all shocked and saddened about a year and a half ago to learn that Raymond just approaching his retirement age from work, had been diagnosed with cancer, and that that cancer was at an advanced stage. Gathered for Raymond's funeral mass, we are professing our Christian faith in the resurrection and in the eternal life won for us by our Lord and Saviour. We are also affirming our Christian belief that death is not the final end for Raymond, even though it does mark the end 
of his life here on earth among us. Our faith assures us that there is life after death, life everlasting. Raymond was given the hope of eternal life on the day he was baptized here in St. Mary's Church almost 60 years ago. Born to Mary Alice, née O'Reilly, and Michael Fitzpatrick on the 27th of August 1961, Raymond was baptized three days later on the 30th of August by Canon Thomas Maguire. He received his primary education at the De La Salle Boys National School in Cavan, followed by his secondary schooling at St. Patrick's College, Cavan. After doing his leaving cert, uh, Raymond worked for his brother Terry at Fitzpatrick Motors for two years before beginning his almost 40-year working career at P&T, which became Telecom Aaron, then Aircom, and finally Air, working in stores as transport manager and latterly in mobile stores. His gentle and pleasant disposition endeared him to all his work colleagues. For many decades, Raymond has been a great stalwart here at St. Mary's Church and in the parish of Castle Tara. He was a man of deep religious faith. He was chair of our finance committee and a member of the committee of St. Patrick's Cemetery, Castle Tara. He also served on the parish pastoral council for a time. He had a keen brain and a great head for figures. He put in countless hours down through the years, counting and banking the church collections, entering the contributions on the computer, preparing and arranging the boxes of envelopes each December, and for many years producing very professional financial records every January, and helping with the acknowledgements to the parishioners. He was a wonderful help and support to myself and to many of my predecessors, including um, Bishop Emeritus Leo. I record my deep gratitude and that of the parish of Castle Tara for all Raymond's help. He was a man you could completely trust your very life to. His Trojan help and eminent wise counsel will be greatly missed by myself and by his colleagues on the various parish committees on which he served. Raymond also organised the stewards for funerals. He brought the lawnmower and other equipment uh, away every year for annual servicing. He organised new flowers for the tubs outside the church every year and kept a general eye on everything relating to this church. He will be greatly missed. About 10 years ago, Raymond embarked on his beekeeping hobby. And as with everything else, he put his heart and soul into the venture. He was meticulous and did everything very professionally and to perfection. He entered and won prizes and trophies for his honey at practically every competition in Ireland, including the prestigious uh, Phoenix Park competition. And he sent honey to a competition in London also. Many of us enjoyed Raymond's beautiful, clear Ballyhays honey. 
Raymond gave talks on beekeeping at Ballyhays Agricultural College. His help and encouragement were instrumental in getting others started in the hobby or helping some continuing in it. For much of his life, from about the age of 18, Raymond suffered with acute back trouble and was on painkillers for 35 years. He got a respite from this for about five years until his recent cancer diagnosis. During this time, he took up dancing. Pre-COVID-19 pandemic, the country club in the Hotel Kilmore became Raymond's regular port of call on Saturday nights. He really enjoyed the dancing and country and western music. A much-loved brother, brother-in-law and uncle, Raymond lived with his late mother Mary Alice until her death and was always very good to her and attentive to all her needs, bringing her to Mass here every Sunday in St Mary's, to the hairdresser and on visits to family members elsewhere in Ireland. When Tony was seriously ill in hospital some 20 years ago, Raymond stepped into the breach, doing the farm work and supporting Mona and his nieces at a very difficult time for them all. About 17 months ago, Raymond was diagnosed with cancer, which was at an advanced stage. Shortly afterwards, the pandemic began. Because of the first major lockdown, uh, Raymond spent three months in Beaumont Hospital, uh, where he was being treated for the cancer, in virtual isolation. But he bore it all very bravely indeed and took all the bad news that he got in his stride. He was determined to battle on as long as there was breath in his body. He was also determined not to be a burden on any of his family and he remained very independent, in total control and clear thinking right up to the very end. When Tony got a new tractor recently, Raymond, in his fragility and weakness, had to climb right up onto the tractor to examine the instrument panel. He loved his gadgetry, and only last week he had to get into Cavan in person to buy a new smartphone. On his way into Cavan for respite the other day, which was to be his last uh, car journey alive, Raymond got PJ to drive him down past the parochial house to view the renovations and partial reconstruction works in progress at present. Raymond was very, very happy to see the work finally begin after four years of hitches. In his heyday, he would have been in his absolute element, keeping an eye on progress and dispensing his good advice and wisdom if sought. Raymond Fitzpatrick was a gentle, decent, honourable, faithful, dependable, thoughtful, helpful, honest and highly respected human being. He was very witty. He was a very private man and a man of few words, but what he had to say usually made a great deal of sense. As I said earlier, his passing is a huge loss to St Mary's Church 
and to our parish of Castle Tara. But hopefully Raymond will continue to keep an eye on us as he always has done and put in a good word for us all above. Let us take consolation from the word of God, the readings for Trinity Sunday. The gospel contained what's known as the Great Commission or commissioning. Go make disciples of all the nations. I believe that Raymond only left Ireland once in his lifetime to go to Turkey, but he was a very faithful disciple of Jesus Christ here in his native Ballyhays and impressed all that he met and worked with. In the second reading today from Romans, St. Paul says, Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son or a child of God. Raymond, in his gentleness, goodness, and kindness, was very much moved by the Holy Spirit. St. Paul continues, If we are children, we are heirs as well, co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. May our dear friend Raymond, who shared our Lord's sufferings so often in this life, now share in the Lord's glory. Ibarhas Nagrast Gorau Aanam Jilish Anish. So I now invite you to stand and the members of the family who are leading the prayers of the faithful to please come forward. We pray for Raymond. In baptism, he was given the pledge of eternal life. May he now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of Raymond. May he now receive the fullness of God's blessings in eternity. Lord, hear us. We pray today for all our departed brothers and sisters. Today we pray for Raymond's mother Molly, his father Michael, his sister Rosemary, his cousin Maraid MacDonald, and all his departed aunts and uncles. May Raymond be reunited with them in God's kingdom where, they, where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. We pray for the family and friends of Raymond. In these difficult days, may the Lord be their strength and their consolation. Lord, hear us. We pray for the staff of the surgical, oncology and palliative care teams in both Beaumont and Cavan who cared for Raymond. God, we thank you for the gifts you have given them and ask you to bless them. Lord, hear us. We make these and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We now profess our faith as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this offering of our service and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. 
Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Martin our Bishop, all the clergy and religious and all God's people. Remember your servant Raymond, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory. 
glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand now and pray to our Heavenly Father in the words Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We just wave the sign of peace at each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring each of us to everlasting life. So for receiving Holy Communion, uh, just come up one seat at a time, try to observe social distancing, and alternate one side and the other, going back along the sides. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Anyone who believes in me will never die.
blossoms today Queen of the angels and Queen of the May Oh Mary we crown thee with blossoms today Queen of the angels and Queen of Proclaim thee, O oh, grant that thy children on earth be as true. As long as the bowers are radiant with flowers, as long as the azures shall keep its bright hue. Psalms today, Queen of the Angels and Queen of the May. Oh Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the Angels and Queen of strange we begin upon earth their harps are repeating the notes of our greeting for Mary herself is the cause of our mirth oh Mary we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the Angels and Queen of the May. Oh Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the Angels and Queen of Sacrament divine, all praise.
Just as a little uh, post-communion reflection, uh, I'll just read for you Footprints in the Sand, which I think is very apt uh, for our present. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamt that he was walking along a beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed the scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed not one, but two sets of footprints in the sand. He understood immediately that one belonged to him and the other to the Lord. But then he noticed a curious thing. At the lowest and saddest times in his life, there was only one set of footprints. This bothered him, so he asked the Lord, how come that during the most difficult times in my life, the very times when I needed you most, you left me on my own. Then the Lord replied, My dear friend, during your trials and sufferings, when you see only one set of footprints, those footprints are mine. It was then that I carried you. I'd just like to thank everybody involved in the Mass in any way, um, all who read or did prayers, or um, I'd like to thank um, uh, Jim and Martina for the lovely musical uh, accompaniment and um, contributions, and I'd like to thank Declan Finnegan and staff for all their help and support. Um, once again, I welcome Bishop uh, uh, Emeritus Leo, uh, who can celebrate it today. So we now stand for the final prayer of the Mass. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother Raymond, who shared in the Eucharist so many times in this church, come to the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have the final commendation. Before we go to our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even
with sleep. 